Hi and welcome to this Garden Gnome Software screencast. This screencast is going to look at what's new in version 5. And to do this, what I'm going to do is just open a project and show you an output. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen, we're going to click our new icon. And this is going to open up V5. And you can see it opens with a welcome screen, which I'll close. And then you can see we've got a completely different layout. Um, it's completely new. Um, we've got our properties panes either side and our, and our outputs. And yeah, we can chop and change the window as much as we want. We can save whichever arrangement you want, or you can go back to standard. So that's totally customizable front end. And as I said, what we're going to do now is just open up a project. So let's go to um, add these and open. Now the first thing that will happen is it loads them and it loads them really quickly. This is thanks to a new rendering engine. And what I'll do here is if I click on this theta image, you'll see that it's sort of straight. Um, basically the theta image was taken on the side. So this is what it actually looked like. So Palo 2 VR has looked at the leveling data for the theta and leveled it. Now obviously it could be leveled a bit better. So what we can do is we can click the L on the keyboard and Palo 2 VR now can level within the viewer. So there you go, well, let's level up on the fridge. So there you go, so it's all nice and level. We could have selected any of the panoramas and leveled them. Okay, so that's that. Um, don't really want a, a, a theta image in the tour, so I'm gonna remove this from the tour. Now, all my input images are geotagged. Um, so basically, Pano 2 vr knows where they are, and they know where they are. So if we just go tour, automatic link in sequential, and that's now set all the hotspots between the nodes. You can see they're all blue and active. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is just open an HTML5 output and just publish that. Okay, so let's save that. So what's happening now is Pano 2 vr by default uses multi-resolution. And what it does is it looks at each image in its own right and then uh, uh, adds which or, or sets the amount of levels it needs. So that means we could have had a few giga panoramas in here or different sizes. And it just adds the correct amount of levels it thinks it needs so you can open up the Pano on mobile devices and other devices as well, computers. Okay, so that, that process is now fully automatic. The other thing it does as well is it timestamps everything on the output. So if nothing changes, if I click um, the create or generate output again, you'll notice nothing's changed, so it does nothing with it. So as long as you've got all your files in the right place, you won't keep generating outputs. So let's just open up the output and you'll see there's the panorama, there's my hotspot. And as it says, it's sequentially linked and it's both ways as well. So there you go. Okay, so what am I gonna do with this now? Right, well, I'm gonna add some transitions um, or a transition. So let's just activate them. Um, again, this is HTML5, but I've got loads of transitions to uh, choose from, but I'm gonna choose cross dissolve and I'm gonna have the effect of zoom in before and zoom in after. I like this effect because it gives me the sense of movement and I'm gonna deselect wait for transition. Let's just publish this and have a look. And you'll see what I mean. Uh, when I click the hotspot, we zoom in and we zoom in when we get there. So it gives us this sense of motion. Okay, right, what else can we do? Right, well, let's go to the, um, this is the viewer. And the viewer has what we call viewer, uh, viewer modes. And I'm gonna select the lens flare mode. I'm gonna go to the bridge. And the bridge has the sun shining through the tree. So it's an ideal opportunity to add a lens flare. Again, um, I've got loads to choose from. I'm going to ch uh, choose generic lens flare number three, and I'm going to set the blinding effect to 70. So the panel is going to get brighter as I look at the sun. So let's just publish that out and have a look at this. Uh, so let's move to the bridge. It's quicker to go this way around. And when I look at the sun, you'll see that it's getting brighter and we've got the lens flare there. Yeah, we've got the quite a good effect if you that sort of thing. Good, right. Okay, from here, what we're gonna do out now is look at the skin. Um, I'm gonna select a blank skin, just saves me um, saving it. And you can see it's a similar sort of layout as the old skin editor, um, but we've got far more new buttons. We've got timers, we've got logic blocks, we've got cloners, we've got scroll areas. We've got a lot of new things going on in the skin, and so much so that there is a separate video for it. But for now, what I wanna concentrate on is our components in our component toolbox. Um, this will come, or Power 2 VR will come with some pre, uh, pre-built components, which you can just drag and drop in. This particular one is for hotspots, and it has a um, hotspot preview and a checkbox to say if we've been there before or not. So let's just publish that out so you can see it. And there it is. And when we hover over, you get the image of the next node, its name and 
we can move to it and when we hover over a node that we've already been in you can see we've got the check mark so that's you know all, all thanks to the logic block and all whatnot in the new skin editor okay um what else do we want to do right well i want to uh, have a pop-up image so let's go back into the skin i'm going to hide that component and i'm going to create oh i'm going to open up the toolbox and i'm going to drag in an ht image template now this template not only has the hotspot but it also has a screen tint so let's choose the screen tint and line it up in the skin and I'm going to set it so it's 0% from the edges so it's tucked up tight against the edges and it's 100% big so it'll always fill the window now let's go to the pop-up itself uh, pop-up itself I'm going to set that so it's 10% uh, from the edges and again it's going to scroll with it's going to scale with the window so let's click OK and save that to the skin Right, now that I've got the component in the skin editor, what I need to do is set where I'm going to have the pop-up. So let's go to the Johann Strauss statue, and I'm going to make sure that I'm at point hotspot um, uh, viewer mode. And when I double click to add the point hotspot, um, you can see now that the hotspot properties come up. I'm just going to add the title, so that's Johann Strauss. And I'm going to change the link target type to image. So this will now use the ht underscore image template that's in the skin. And all I need to do now is just add which image I want to pop up. So here we're just going to open it up, add Johann Strauss, click open, job done. If I now just publish this out and open it up, let's go to um, Johann's um, oh, node. And you'll see that where I've placed that particular hotspot, I've now got the pop-up image. We've now got his name and when I click it, we've now got the image that pops up and it's all scalable because we were using percentages. There you go. If I wanted to add another pop-up image, all I would do is just move to the node I wanted to, double click, set the link type to image and add the image and that would also then pop up in that location. Okay, so that's um, quite a few of the new features there. There are far more new features here and there are gonna be little videos to discuss them or talk about them. Um, but the major thing for me at the moment is this one here. It's the animation tool. When I click the animation tool, we get a, a, a new window pop up and what I'm going to do is select a, a node from the tour, click OK. And what we've also built here is magic keyframes and I'm just going to adjust this to 50 so you can see it move a lot quicker. But this is magic keyframes and it works by degrees per second. So it tries to give you a, a fluent movement. So we just need to move the panorama, zoom in at a keyframe in the timeline. Um, I'm going to zoom it around again, zoom out a bit add another keyframe, look up, add a keyframe, and then look to where I'm gonna exit this, this, this particular node and add a keyframe. Now, obviously the keyframes are shorter than the timeline, so I can right button click, trim the timeline. I can rewind and press play, and you can see the animation I've just created. There you go. Um, you can obviously add keyframes manually, and you can move everything manually, but using magic keyframes is far simpler. I'm just gonna add, uh, a second node to this click OK and we're just going to make this really simple add a keyframe zoom in add a keyframe go back add a keyframe and zoom out add a keyframe okay again the uh, keyframes are shorter than the timeline so I'll just quickly trim that we'll rewind and play and you can see that animation that I've just created okay so that's that cool right let's stop that now that I've got an animation, what am I going to do with it? Right, well, let's go back to the HTML5 output. I'm going to go to Auto Rotation and activate that. And I'm going to use the animation. Let's start after fully loaded, publish that out, and let's see it. Okay, so there's my animation within the tour. Okay, so you could actually have it on a, a button for an auto tour button or whatever you want to do. And of course, we've got the transitions. So after the clip, it uses the transitions to move from node to node. There you go. So that's actually quite cool. Because I've only set two, um, two uh, animation clips, it's just going to go between the two. But of course, you would set one per node of your tour. Right. OK, that's um, what we can do with the animation in a tour. But what else can we do with it? Right, well, I can actually set animation as an output. And for that, I would need to set the transitions up again because this is a separate output. So let's just do what we did before. And also what I'm going to do is set what I'm going to do with the animation. And this time around, I'm going to generate an MPEG-4 video. So we can output a video clip that we can then upload to YouTube or use for promotional 
um, uh, purposes for the tour or for a building or whatever. But yeah, you can upload it to YouTube or any other social media sharing sites uh, which does video. There you go. That's the main, um, uh, I say main, but there are some of the new things within version 5. Please check out all the other videos and thanks for watching.